Sal, it's been a long time since I did a Parsha video. Sal, let's do a Parsha video. I'm sitting in the car, driving a long way, got nothing else to do. So, might as well. Not a, nothing else to do. Doing the Parsha is good. And maybe we'll get back in the swing of things and maybe I'll get back to doing them weekly. Um, this week's Parsha, Parsha's Yisro. Um, quick summary of the Parsha, a couple of significant things in the Parsha. Um, Parsha is called Yisro because at the beginning of the Parsha, Moshe's father in law, Yisro, the Midianite, uh, comes to meet Bnei Yisrael. Uh, he brings along Moshe's uh, sons. Uh, children and wives, the wife uh, from Midian. Uh, that's what they say. And he meets up with Nesha because he's heard of uh, the the Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the Exodus, and um, he wants to come and, uh, um, and uh, be part of the of the process. Um, so. Yisro comes, and he sees that uh, Moshe is inundated with uh, with um, people who are coming to ask him questions and, and for advice and leadership and rulings. So Yisro suggests that Moshe set up uh, a hierarchy of uh, management of offices. Uh, tens, hundreds, thousands that uh, who the people will go and bring their uh, their disputes and their problems to the local officer of 10 and if the officer of 10 can't resolve it he'll go up to the next level officer of 100 or in a thousand and, and uh, to the elders and then if that only if nobody else lower down in the hierarchy can solve it then only the biggest problems come to uh, to Moshe to ease uh, Moshe's burden uh, Moshe thinks this is a good idea. He says, so Shem Hashem says, great, go do it. So they implement uh, this uh, very practical um, procedure. And then um, the other major uh, thing in the Parsha, of course, is Matan Torah, is the giving of the Torah at Har Sinai. Bnei Yisrael gets to Har Sinai and they experience the uh, the um, um, giving it a Torah. And so, most we all know the story. Moshe Rabbeinu goes up on the mountain. God, uh, for 40 days and 40 nights, God gives him the two luchos, the ta two tablets that have the Aseris and Dibros, the Ten Commandments, on them. The Parsha says that the Ten Commandments um, was spoken by Hashem Himself to all the people, and so there's a bunch of things about the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments appear twice in the Torah: once in this week's parsha, parsha Yisrael, and a second time. And Parshas uh, Veskanan, I think, in, in uh, Sefer Devarim. It's Parshas Veskanan, I think it's Veskanan. Um, and there is a, but it's whatever it is, the Sefer Devarim. My mind is shot. I don't remember details anymore. Um, whatever it is, it appears twice. Uh, once in Sefer Devarim, once here. And there are a number of uh, differences between the. Um, two versions. In uh, this version, the last uh, five commandments of, uh, uh, are put as individual phrases. Lo sirtzach, lo sinaf, the, uh, you know, lo sachmod. They're individual sentences. In Tvarim, uh, they're all connected with conjunct with the vav and the word and. So, don't steal, don't, here it's don't steal, don't murder, don't, uh, um, um, covet your neighbors, etc. Um, and Tvarim, they are 
don't steal and don't murder and 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 they're connected with the buffs that's a trivial um, issue um, the main there's major difference the one that gets everybody there are a couple of other ones but the major difference that really um, um, gets all the Mufarshim worked up is uh, Shamar Vizachar uh, here it says Shamar as Yom HaShabbos the Kadsho and in Dvarim it says Zachar as Yom HaShabbos the Kadsho guard the Shabbos day to keep it holy and the other one is remember the Shabbos day to keep it holy and so that's kind of a big difference Shamar and Zachar are different ones so the question is what did Shem say on Har Sinai and what's the difference and why there's a difference so if you know the song Lecha Dodi from Friday night, it's sung on Friday night as part of Kabbalah Shabbos in many places, in most places. There is a line in the Lecha Dodi, it says, Shamar v'zachar b'dibur echad. That uh, Shamar and Zachar in one speech. So, Mufar to Medrash says that God said both versions simultaneously. Um, the difference is one of emphasis. Um, Shamor implies active work that you're doing, active uh, uh, protecting the Shabbos, and Zachar is a passive activity. Remembering something is is a passive activity, and Shamor guarding something is an active. Uh, activity. You can't guard something by sitting around and, and meditating on it. You have to actively do something. And Zachar, you have to, you know, if you're thinking about something, you sit back in the easy chair and ponder. So the two versions of the Sarah Sidibros telling us different aspects of the need um, to keep Shabbos holy uh, there is in the sense of shamar is that are all of the the prohibitions and the things the active mitzvos that you need to do for shabbos it's a you can't do the various malachos on shabbos uh, and at the same time you have active mitzvos to to the things that you need to do on shabbos you need to have uh have a meal uh, meals on Shabbos you have to do um, certain carbonos of the basic majors that are required on Shabbos these are all things that you actively need to do there's also the idea to keep in mind to remember the meaning and purpose of Shabbos it's your Zachar Shabbos is not just a list of restrictions and things that you tick off that you have to do and can't do this. Shabbos has also got to be a state of mind that you're doing rest. That Malachos, in some sense, are almost arbitrary. It says you shouldn't work on the Shabbos. And, you know, we have our traditional list of 39 Malachos and the various derivations from them of things that we don't do on Shabbos. But that's only part of it, doing Shabbos. Um, sure, you can't do Malachos, and it's very important to do Malachos. And when I say that there are Malachos, the list of 39 Malachos is in some sense arbitrary. I'm not suggesting that it's that could pick and choose from them. No, you have to do, you don't do stuff on Shabbos. That much is very clear. That Shabbos is not supposed to do stuff. And among the very, you know, there's, uh, and, um, but the, um, 
fact that you're not allowed to do stuff comes from the need, the, the, the whole attitude and meaning of Shabbos. Shabbos is a day of rest. Shabbos is a day of disconnection from the physical world. It's a day where you're supposed to spend your day in Kedusha. It's a Shabbos is Kodesh. It's holy. You're supposed to Kodesh in Kedusha. The, attitude, the idea of Kedusha uh, implies separation in uh, things that are holy are maintain a degree of separation from they're separate from the mundane world um, Truma you know the Thai and it's Kodesh it's holy Truma is the gift uh, from the produce that you obligated to give to the Kohen. Um, Truma is Koli, is Kodesh, it's holy, it's sacred. Um, and to do Truma, you physically separate it from um, the rest of the produce in a state of Tahara, purity, ritual purity. Kedusha and Tahara go together. Um, but they're not the same thing. Sahara and, uh, and but an object in this Kodesh is not in some sense no longer of this world entirely. When it's objects as Tim and Tara is, uh, that's very much involved in this world. It's, uh, it's, but Kedusha no longer, things that are Kodesh no longer belong completely to the mundane world. And I have a degree of separateness. And so Shabbos, Shamar B'Zachor, you remember and you keep uh, guard and you uh, remember the Shabbos. Uh, the whole point of Shabbos is the Kedusha of it. Is It's a day where you are sanctifying the day itself by separating it from the mundaneness of the world. And so there's certain things that you can't pull yourself out of the physical world completely. I mean, you have to eat, you have to drink, you have to sleep, you have to do all the things you need to do. So of course you eat, you drink, and you're happy on Shabbos, and you rejoice, and you, you're... Uh, um, there's actually an argument amongst the, the Rishonim whether there's a mitzvah to be to, to be misameach, to rejoice on Shabbos or not. But whatever it is, is we practically, you know, we... we uh, uh, emphasize the specialness of the day, but we have our best, try to have our best food, we try to just have our best clothes uh, for Shabbos to emphasize the separateness of it from the rest of the week. And so, despite the differences, is there's two aspects of, the, of Shabbos that can't be separated from one another. Uh, it's because the whole thing is to be, uh, to, to elevate the Shabbos over the mundane world and to unplug to use the modern vernacular and it's very interesting uh, that idea of Kedusha separateness to uh, take the world the Shabbos uh, and separate it from, from the mundane concerns um, I've read recently a number of studies and a number of, that indicate that uh, people, in terms of smartphone and internet usage and connectedness, social media, and being constantly in connection with the uh, with uh, very mundane aspects of the world. I mean, social media is as uh, frivolous, for the most part, is as frivolous as you can get. And the internet, people spend all their time staring at the phone or the computer or the tablet, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the rest of them. Uh, consumes, uh, you know, chats, WhatsApp, it consumes people's lives. It consumes people's minds. Um, and spend 
entirely too many people spend basically their entire waking life plugged in and connected and, and up to their eyeballs in the mundaneness and inanity of, uh, of the world. And so I've seen a number of studies and a number of articles that indicate that um, a day of unplugging is a great value to a person's mental health. And as is suggested by, uh, by psychologists and backed by scientific research to show this, that turning off the phone and unplugging from uh, the internet and social media and all the technology and the, the communication uh, for a day, one day a week, is of enormous mental health benefit to people. And people who turn off for a day they're less depressed, they're happier, they, they, they're less stressed out in the end. And it's really um, um, an interesting thing. It's because the Torah told us this 3,400, 500 years before social media was invented. And it's of supreme benefit to the mental health of a person to have a day that is Kodesh, uh, that where you're just unplug, you disconnect from all of your trivial day-to-day -day concerns and you forget about your business, you forget about your work, you forget about all the things, the troubles and worries, that there's nothing you can do about it and you don't do anything about it. And you sit down, you the best food you can, you have a, a, sing songs, you relax, you chill, you take a nap, and you disconnect from the physical world for a day. And so that's an amazing thing. You know, there's uh, the, the Shabbos is, you know, we're coming back around and people poo pooed on this old, quaint old notion of Shabbos as why can't I play on the computer? Why can't I watch movies? It's not really work. It's, you know, I sit up and play on my phone or I'm going to, you know, watch TV or I'm going to do this I go to, to the beach or I'm going to ride my bicycle well that's not work why do I have to not do it why is it forbidden on Shabbos blah 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 well you know what it's good for you not to be plugged in and connected and to, to, to turn off for a day and that's really good for you and it's also it's a mitzvah for the Jews and it's good for you Hey, see, so maybe there's something to this whole religion thing after all that we come back around it takes a while you come back around that everybody needs needs time to decompress to stay away from their concerns to process and uh, you have the Shamar Vizacha B'dibur Echad that this is uh, God's word to us thousands of years ago you know hey this Torah thing has a lot to it um, so that's what we got to say about, uh, about Parsons Yisro this week. Of course, there's all kinds of things, you know, like in every Parsha, we got many other things we could discuss, but that's my rant for the day. It's, uh, and it's a little bit, uh, silly, ironic that I'm going to post these videos on social media and it's a rant against uh, social media. But that's the truth is that I'm not really against social media or uh, communication or any other advances in modern technology for that part. Uh, as long as you just, it's like any other tool, you use it right or you use it wrong. So you use this uh, internet and, uh, and uh, the power of modern communication for the proper purposes and it's good. And you have Shabbos to unplug and decompress in our monitors. Have a good Shabbos and thanks for listening.